Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Goodwin, or B.R. Goodwin, and I'm the author of the Sugar Tree Romance series. I'm going to read you an excerpt from a Sugar Tree Spring Romance, Honeysuckle Breeze, that came out last month. Um, and this is a street argument between Caroline and Griffin. Griffin leaned across a post office box, completely unbothered, with his arms crossed, biceps winking at Caroline from the threadbare t-shirt he changed into after service, and confident smirk ever present. She marched up to him and pointed her finger into his chest. You are grating my nerves. Dang it, she thought. His chest was just as rock solid as she'd imagined. She whipped her finger away just as fast, unwilling to be distressed over a simple set of pectorals, and put her hands in her dress pockets. I missed you, he declared again. Stop saying that. She nearly shouted, causing at least a few heads to turn in their direction. No, I missed you, and I'm sorry if that's disrespectful, seeing as you're in a serious relationship with Ryan and all, but I've never been a liar, Caroline. I missed you, and I knew I'd find you here because I knew you'd be planning, because it's Sunday afternoon, and you love to sit in Good Start after service and lunch with your family, and sometimes after a quick nap. I know it because I know you, and I missed you. She flung her hands from her dress, nearly lifting it off her thighs completely with the movement, and then smoothed it down before she lost herself. Obviously, she rolled her eyes, I'm not in a relationship with Ryan. She couldn't admit the way the rest of his speech had moved her, not to herself and certainly not to Griffin. No, that? No way, I don't believe it. Griffin shook his head in dramatic disbelief and bit his knuckles as if he were in the throes of a Days of Our Lives episode. But you looked so in love. Stop, Caroline grumbled. I'm not dating Ryan, but I... You did go on a date with Ryan though, right? She glared at him. It's really none of your business, Griffin. Griffin pushed off the postal box and stepped towards Caroline, invading her space with all the pieces of him she'd missed for so long. Was it after, he asked. She put her hand up, ignoring the extremely poignant question about the event. You embarrassed me. You shouldn't have talked about my personal business in front of your mama and certainly not in front of Theo. I'm his teacher, Griff. He can't see me as his buddy, Miss Caroline, all the time. I am Miss Remillard. She lowered her hand and placed it on her jutted out hip. Her mama had always said Caroline used her hands to talk, so she made an effort to ground them when at all possible. What if he goes to school and talks about my boyfriend there? What if other parents talk about it? Caroline, half this town saw you holding hands with Ryan walking up the church lawn this morning, and then the other half saw him fake break up with you about five minutes into your charade. If people are going to talk, they're going to talk. I had little to do with it. You, darling, can thank your own efforts for the sugar tree gossip that will surely abound. Her nostrils flared, conceding defeat. Fine, I made a fool of myself and my friend, but I will not let you, Griffin Lovett, make a fool of me. Not again. He made a step closer and she stopped him with a raised palm. No. Now I'm going to get my stuff and I'm going upstairs, pointedly to get away from you. I want you to know that. Stop following me. Stop saying how much you miss me. You, she paused, hating how vulnerable she felt and hating the way nearly half the town seemed to have congregated inside the front window of Good Start Coffee with their faces smudged up against the glass, watching the Sunday afternoon entertainment. A show indeed. Mrs. Woodhouse's bright red hat shimmied with every drama lit turn of her head, nearly hitting her own husband in the face. Caroline turned back to Griffin. Better to lay it all out there, once and for all, she thought. You hurt me, Griffin, so seeing you back here, it hurts. I'd like you to give me some space. He nodded, wavy hair the color of dark amber honey falling down across his eyebrow as he looked towards the ground. Despite her plea, he took another step. He reached out a hand and then thought better of it, putting it in his pocket instead. I'm sorry, I'm home for good, you know. The other day you said, while you were here, I'm here to stay, Caroline, I'm not going anywhere. Okay, well, give me space here. He gestured to the sidewalk. Give you space? He took a step away. This good enough? It's a start, she said, crossing her arms, and stop coming to my classroom every day. He shook his head, clicking his tongue. Man, I wish I could, but my kid is in your class, and he tilted his head just so. We both kind of have a thing for his teacher. Caroline's heart pitter-pattered, sputtering with every word, nothing more than a weak old car engine beginning to come to life. She wanted to stomp her floral footwear on it until it died for good. So I'll give you space outside of school. How's that? You'll keep your comments to yourself in public? Obviously, his tilted smile was decidedly not appealing. And she took a step back, looking to make her exit. No more interrupting my planning time on Sundays. He put a hand to his chest, positively hurt. A man needs coffee, Caroline. I can't make promises I know I won't keep. He took one step forward, a dance of sorts, backing her closer and closer to the window. Just kiss her, Griff, Mr. Woodhouse yelled through the glass. 
gracious, this town is certifiable, Caroline growled. You love it here. She shrugged. I know, I really do. It's annoying. She couldn't fight the tiny smile lifting her lips. I do too. His smile returned, warm and full of honesty. Griffin loved Sugar Tree? Could that be true? Before the event, Caroline may have let herself daydream about what it would look like if Griffin ever decided to come home to Sugar Tree for good. What could it mean? Now she looked up, staring into the dark blue eyes she'd imagined seeing in person so many times over the past year. All those longed-for conversations over screen time so she could look into the depths of those soul thoughts for herself, face to face. Here he finally stood within arm's reach and she felt like she might sink into them, wondering all over again what it meant that Griffin was staying this time. When her butt actually did hit the window, surprising her with a jolt, Caroline shook herself from the what could be fantasy. Okay, well, we're settled. She shoved out her hand in a movement of pure awkwardness, real life middle school level, and shook Griffin's love its hand like she'd bought a brand new car off him. Good doing business with you, Griff. I'll be seeing you. She turned and made for the door, but Hopefully not often, right? Oh, I'll stick to the agreement, honey. No doubts about it. She she fumbled through the door, leaving Griffin on the street, and was welcomed by the groans of a crowd who hadn't gotten what they came in for. Y'all need to get cable or go for a walk, she yelled to the bystanders who'd begun to disperse. Okay, so that is Honeysuckle Breeze from Chapter 6. I hope you'll take uh, a look. It's on Amazon and on KU. And... Um, yeah, it's a fun spring romance if you're looking for it. So thank you so much.